Hello everyone, welcome to political science class. Today I'll be taking on class 12. The topic is on continuation from the previous session. The, that is on unit 1, an introduction to political theory. Okay, today our focus topic is on the utility and importance of the study of political theory. Okay, the first one, the importance of the study of political theory, the first is relevant to solving our problems in life here. Okay, political theory, it has relations with other academic disciplines like uh, economics, sociology, history, even ethics, okay? And uh, relations with this, it helps the political theories to develop a theory which is based on data and have a scientific basis, all right? And this subject, in relations with these subjects also, it helps in solving day-to-day uh, -day problems because they focus on issue that is happening in the current situation and gives problem uh, and gives sorry solutions to the existing problems with, on rational basis. Okay, point number two, knowledge of our right and duties. Okay, as a student of political theory, we know about our rights and our duties. Okay, especially when it comes to election, we are conscious about our right to vote. And a knowledge on a political theory help us to know that the right to vote is not only our right, but also a duty where everyone has to be performed. Okay, now number three, political theory liberalizes the outlook. Okay, prominent uh, political philosophers, they have developed, uh, they have come out with important concepts like liberty, equality, fraternity, justice, even freedom. All right, and a knowledge about this concept it helps us to understand what is our right, okay, what is our freedom, and also it liberalizes our outlook towards other people because whatever rights and duties and freedom that we enjoy, that type of freedom and rights also what is also enjoyed by the other people. All right, so a knowledge on these ideas or this concept helps us to liberalize the outlook in the society. Okay, point number four, politics essentially is the art of possible. Okay, here, Professor Crick, he says that uh, individual or a citizen should not expect too much from the government, all right? It is the art of possible. No doubt a government will face problems, okay, and the prob uh, government will have limitations, but this, Problems and limitation does not mean that pol uh, politics cannot solve the problem. Because if there is a lot of tensions or a lot of uh, bonds, all right, political turmoil, it will lead to the downfall of the political system. But does not mean that politics cannot come up with a solution. Okay. Number five, a growth in the reasoning power of mind. Okay, to develop a theory. For example, liberalism, Marxism, we need a lot of thinking, all right? A rational thinking, an independent thinking. And that uh, idealism or that concept should have a scientific base in order to be accepted. There are some theories which were not accepted because they do not have a scientific base. For example, the fascist that was popularized by Mussolini in Italy. And also we have uh, this Nazism popularized by Hitler in Germany. This uh, idealism was not accepted because the idea about society was based on myth, okay? For example, they say that every leader or every uh, individual is of right. This shows that whoever becomes the leader has the absolute authority. But we should remember that as an individual, as a human being, or as a leader, he or she would have limitations as well as the positive strength, all right? And because of their thought or because of the belief in this myth, it led to the respective downfall. There are also other questions that is recently debated in the international politics, that is, can we have a global citizenship, all right? Or can India be a secularist uh, nation? So these questions, it needs careful thinking and careful reasoning so as to provide a solution which is acceptable and which is 
justified and is in accordance with the views and opinions of the majority of the people. Okay, our next topic is politics in seemingly non-political domain. Okay, the issue of politics, it also involves or we see the presence of politics even outside the political domains. Okay, in your text you is given three points that is family life, the sports, the film award and censoring of films. Okay, we'll discuss the first one, family life. When we talk about family, the issues in a family is mostly based on gender. Yeah. In the past, the girls were treated as fair because it cannot be compared with the boys, especially in education also, in getting basic necessities also. So this notion, okay, the notion that girls are at not par with the boys, it perpetuated or it led to the emancipation for women and the, the, the rights of the women, it was a union conflict. All right, with the involvement of the government, the government has passed laws for the protection of women's rights. For example, we have laws that prohibits discrimination of women in office work also, even in, on the basis of religion or sex, and uh, even in educational institutions. Okay, so we see that with the involvement of the uh, government, the rights of the women were finally answered and it was in a positive direction. Okay, the, the sports. Sports here, especially in cricket, okay, and especially in cricket and in football, we see the uh, presence of politics. And in India, the cricket. The BCCI, which is the supreme authority of the cricket control, it is a very powerful body. Okay, the BCCI is a very powerful body, but there were conflicts. Even though the members of the BCCI have a single aim, that is excellence of cricket in India, but the members they have conflict. Why? Is because they want to have the authority. All right. With this, since there were conflict among the members the state intervened okay so as to bring about a solution even the supreme court of india she adopted uh, she formed a committee called the loda committee loda is a justice okay under him the supreme court formed the committee and asked the committee to identify the problems and also provide solutions to the problem okay so even in sports we see the presence of politics Okay, the last point is film award and censoring of films. We often hear about the presence of politics in films that is while choosing or while choosing a director or an actor, actress for an award, even in music industries also. The recent issues that is going on right now about the suicide of an important personality has rocked the film industry in India. The other is censoring of films. Okay, the court has given, okay, the court has ruled out that in education, in books or even in films, there is the presence of censor, all right. Especially in cases relating to religious, if it hurts the religious sentiment or if it hurts the historical, uh, historical background of that community or of that religion, all right, or of a particular community. So here the court has the right to censor, but not in every or other issues, all right? But in uh, this, if it hurts the religious or the sentiments of the community, okay? So these three is where the, we see the presence of politics, all right? But we should remember that every conflict is not a political conflict. For example, a conflict between a children over a toy, all right this led to a disagreement between parents this conflict is a private conflict okay not a political conflict for a pol political conflict like this for example the emancipation of the one this is a political conflict okay and it needs a political or a universal answer for all these problems all right so these are the three areas in which we see the existence of politics even though these points does not directly come under the influence of the political institution all right okay our next topic is on resolving political arguments through reasoning okay first point more than one political party competing for political power 
in a one party system for example um, this the nazis and the fascists there it is a mass party because there is only a single leader all right and that leader it decides the function or even the programs of that country but in a democratic country we have the presence of a numerous political party for example in india she has a multi-party system okay we have the presence of or the existence of a national party we have a state party and we have a lot of regional parties the presence of these political parties okay it molds a public opinion for example the leader of a political party or a member of the political party it has links with the public through maybe meetings or maybe through televisions okay or through mass media and even in modern world we have they uh, have relations through this mass media like twittering okay in this uh, di discussion with the public they raise issues or they discuss issues like poverty unemployment corruptions or even in educational setup okay in this uh, discussion with the public the public is made aware of their rights as well as their duties or the problems that need to be answered. Okay, and in this political party competing for political power, here the masses they play a very important role. All right, in helping a particular party so that their answers or so that their demands could be answered or be applied, or even in the making of the or passing of a particular bill. Okay, next is elections. It is through elections that an individual or a party gets an opportunity to form the government and let their uh, this manifestos, whatever they have given in the manifestos, be applied and in the working of the government. But here, if these issues are in the elections, if the issues are not clarified okay or if the these problems that the people wanted to be answered is not in accordance with the wishes or the demands of the people it is through elections that that political party is bound to lose because in india we have seen that in every particular elections they are focused with a particular issue for example in 1977 general election that general election was based on an issue that is democratic versus authoritarian because of the role that was played by Mrs. Indira Gandhi. Okay, in that election, for the first time, the Congress lost and a non-political, uh, non-Congress political party came into power. That is in the form of Janata Party led by Morarji Desai. So it throws like that through elections. Okay anti-democratic are severely punished by the voters so here the answer to the demand is in the hands of the voters and it is true reasoning okay the voter chooses which party is best suited for the coming election okay next we have point number three that is debate in legislature okay the presence of the debate is very important okay in a parliament or even in a legislature when i say parliament it's talking about the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha. When I say uh, legislature, the legislature is present in every state. Okay, so debates in the legislature, it helps the opposition party, all right, to voice out if that bill is not in accordance with the constitution. Again, there are issues like maybe on environment or on the uh, terrorism. In these issues, they might have a common answer, but issues like corruption, poverty, health, education, they might have different answers. Through reasoning, all right, through the reasoning of the legislature or this, the leaders in the Lok Sabha or in the Rajya Sabha, they come up with a solution, okay, to the different views or different questions that has been raised by the people and has been discussed in the legislature. So through debates, okay, the answers or the questions that the people wants to uh, raise is being discussed. Okay, next we have interest group. Apart from the political party, we also have various interest groups like business groups, trade unions, agriculture, agriculturalists, farm unions. Okay, this the presence of this group it helps a political party, especially in the passage of a bill. Okay, they meet uh, these interest groups. 
They meet members of the parliament, especially on issues like wages, proper working condition, okay, or even taxation. So in this, their views and opinion is being expressed to the legislature and the legislature takes their voices or their concerns and is being debated in the legislature. All right, so this is the role of the pressure group. Next, we have the courts. The presence of the court in India, we have the Supreme Court and a lot of high court. The presence of this court is to settle disputes between individuals or even between an individual and a state, okay? In India and even in the United States, the Supreme Court, it has a lot of power, all right? And it is in the hands or it is the authority of the Supreme Court to resolve disputes between a center and a state or even between a state and the other state, for example, the border issues or even this interwater disputes, all right? So these issues are being resolved by the Supreme Court. So in this five points, we see that these problems may not be resolved through and brought uh, these organs of government, but most of these issues are resolved through the reasoning of the people or maybe through the reasoning of the legislature or the interest group or the presence of the judiciary. All right. So we have come to the end of this unit one. In this unit one, we have discussed about the meaning of political science and the scope of political science also. And we have discussed the meaning and scope of political theory, the utility or the importance of political theory, the existence of politics in a non-political domain, and the last one, this one, the reasoning of uh, this resolving pub political arguments through reasoning. So with this, we have come to the end of unit one, all right?